speakers are in good shape. You know why the speakers are in great shape? No, they're not. They because the first because I don't use them. Out. If it's a 2004, they're not good speakers. Okay, yeah. well, let me get the high. And, and if you if you I didn't mean, upgrade to this to yeah. the six dish changer, they definitely aren't good speakers. Listen, when I get a new car, well, I'll have new speakers. Calf money. You could have afforded new speakers. <laughs> a sub. Calf lizard. Cab lizard. It's pretty cab much lizard, my cab lizard. Lot lizard. You, you sit. Tomato, you, si tomato. you sit in there with your little your little lizard arms on the wheel all day, the and you arms. look around and go, and you put the little water thing down. And you drive a little more, and when you get done and you get to some place, you go like it's hot outside, and your little tongue goes out. And you go, and then you like crawl out, and then you crawl under the trailer. You do your little lizard things, and then you like slither back in and you, like close the door and turn it on because it's so hot outside. Yeah, it's pretty much right. We I just are. Want to know, when was the when was the last time? like you actually felt the need to change out the radio in a car i mean when when you were younger i mean like you you wanted to have like this like super whiz bang alpine with all the great oh yeah my brother stereo was like that. and yeah. speakers and all that stuff and today the only thing i need is like a usb jack that i can plug the phone the phone into well the, and that's it the other part is too is like how many times have like we used to take the face plates off of the things or like hit the button where the whole assembly would come out because of theft when's the last time someone got their their stereo stolen yeah. the, the only time i ever in my life had like something stolen out of my car out of my car um they stole they stole my radio and i reported to the cops the cop shows up to fill out the report and says yeah we actually caught him and i'm like oh who was it and he says it's your next door it's your next door neighbor i'm like oh that's my cousin nice i yeah, love uh, that redneck white trash my, yes. my brother my brother used to like get the new heads and faces all the time so he'd be like oh, i got to get this compatible one or whatever and i remember one time he he bought one and then got another one because the other one had a background display you know with all 200 uh, little LED diodes on the front, <laughs> LCD diodes that would show like dolphins swimming while like a track played. And you look at that now and you're just like, what the I hell is this? That. And it was probably like $400 in 2000 money. I mean, you know, it, funny is everybody take the face plates off and they just throw them in the jockey box anyways. No. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Welcome, welcome to your number fun handgun shooting podcast, uh, primarily about USPSA. That's right. Hot 22 minutes of of radio talk uh joining me it's paracast anyways if you're new to the show turn off now uh joining me tonight he's hunting his own dinner washing in the lake and shooting irons it's 19th century steve koski hey and he still doesn't know how an eight track cassette works <laughs> <laughs> new tech it's still new tech to him and he just got the first life sentence he paid for it's robert wyatt that's actually pretty true. It, it, it is. If and the AT, if, the, if the ATF ever shows up to my house, I might have a few more life sentences. With his wife gone, no one will be able to drive him to steal his dad's primers. It's Kenny Terry. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness she's back. <laughs> I'm running low, babe. Steve, Steve is quickly hiding everything. <laughs> Some of the lockbox. I remember when we used to have the the non power steering, non power brake trucks, and when we would have to like, you'd make a delivery, and it's just like, I don't want to help this chick. It's nine o'clock at night. It's Christmas. I'm not helping these people put the trampoline under the Christmas tree. And the best thing about those old package cars you used to turn it off, turn down the lights, and it would drive the same way coasting in absolute stealth mode, and then you just. <laughs> And then the helper would be like, is it this? It's like, shut up. Shut your whore mouth. Don't make a sound. <laughs> All point. We're using points now. <laughs> that one right there. And then they'd start like, like, it's like, yeah, have you no idea how to be quiet? And then you're like, you'd set it against the garage. And then you'd be just like, you get in the car and you'd be like, okay, buckle up. And you hear the click. And as soon as you buckle up, you slam that thing in first, drop, first drop the clutch and just get on out of there that was the way that was 130 pound five pound whatever ups earn, earning all that teamster money since 2000 and oh, yeah 2000 yeah since 2000 so the, is your labor dispute over tom or yeah it's back on the job yeah we're we are we are unfortunately we did not have a short strike because i would have enjoyed a four or five day weekend uh, we got a tentative agreement, like, last Tuesday. So not this previous Tuesday, but the Tuesday before it, they reconvened and literally came, like, 
It was so close, it took them 40 minutes after they got to the negotiating table to reach a number and be like, okay, tentative agreement, no one strikes, everyone keeps working, and everyone's, everyone's happy as a clam. So it just needs to be voted on, and then once it's voted on and ratified, it's an official five-year deal. So it's, it, it worked out for everybody pretty well. So nice. we're, we're happy with it. I'm just very happy I won't have to strike or worry about it for five years, because five, every five years it's always something. And there's always somebody walking around complaining about what it is or what it's not and it's just like would you like go find the other trucking job that pays you this much and they're like well i just i just think we deserve more it's like well everyone thinks they deserve more that's just not the way the world works so (laughs) feel free to accept your lead industry leading pay um so anyways oh i wrote one i wrote one for jared because jared said he might be on there uh let's let's talk about uh what we did in the in the guns this week uh, I did something, and, I, and Robert did something very similar. And I think that we should uh, address this by the USPSA membership fee increase talk. I wish we had. I wish I had a drop thing that I could just play like some news things. But da 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 da. So anyway, uh, what was it on Wednesday? Wednesday or Thursday? Tuesday night. Tuesday. When, no, no, it was Wednesday when they had the the special meeting. You're right. Yeah. So they they have a special meeting, and they they all got together and be like, hey, everyone's unanimously like rip shit about it so i i i would say that most people were expecting a fee increase and we've talked about a fee increase on this show for for years and we were probably looking at something like 10 bucks or 15 bucks and then it ended up being 25 dollars. but that wasn't the worst increase the worst a year yeah 65 bucks a year what yes Wow, that's a pretty big jump. Yeah, it's a, it's like a seventy percent increase, just a seventy percent increase. But we were talking to Yimin last week. Sixty-two percent increase. We were, we were talking to Yimin about it, and Yimin was talking about like they haven't been raised since two thousand four. So we were, it's like okay, like, but still sixty-five seems to be a lot. And then there were some other shenanigans that happened on uh, PSI Practical Shooting Insights, uh, where someone gave him the list of the salaries of uh the departments and individuals that were in uspsa and from like 2019 to 2023 those salaries um doubled got like, leaked yeah but the they increased during like the COVID time of from like seventy thousand to 140 something thousand um over that time just seemed kind of a little off and so the financial situation kind of hit a peak and uh then well, i mean a, a part of that part of that uh they were talking about uh dnroi uh and they you did you saw the you saw the uh, wages increase substantially for that what it wasn't entirely telling was that they gave uh they gave troy an the assistant. approval to um hire a, an assistant dnroi and he hired two yeah and so all of a sudden so, you see you know troy kept his salary so he kept all of his hundred thousand dollars but then they added two more people. And you'd yeah. think if like if you hire assistants, then your job isn't necessarily you don't have to do as much. So why are we still paying you a hundred thousand dollars? Well, and if the members well, the other part is too is like if the membership is decreasing or like during the COVID time of did we did we need those people? Regardless, the 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 uh, the salaries and the budgets got leaked, and so people were they had a couple things that they were sitting there looking on, and so when the board met, uh, they came back and said like something a little bit more reasonable, which was, uh, "We're not implementing these. We're, we're going back. We're not immediately implementing these because when they were implemented uh, last week, they were like immediate. Refresh the website. It's now sixty-five bucks, and the so that's live. It was live. It was oh. live. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then they got yelled at." And then they thought better of it, and so these increases will start October first, I believe. And so they yeah. they refunded everyone the difference that everyone who paid them back, and they said, like anybody with two working brain cells would do, uh, get it while you can get it, and then October first, the new prices will then come into uh, come into effect. But the one thing is, like the sixty five dollar increase, like you know, 62%, but the, uh, like the life membership went from $500 to a thousand dollars. So they, that's the old hundo. And so they hit GM on, on that price increase. And so they're, uh, they, they raised a bunch of that stuff and now they're coming back. So they, well, the funny thing was, um, this week, 
it may have been yesterday or something like that. I'd, I'd actually heard heard this same story, but Pat Brown, um, he he posted that Layton Area Two director originally wanted an eighty five dollar a year annual fee, and that's what he was pushing for. And so he was so Pat Brown posted. I'd actually heard the same thing from somebody else um, earlier in the week, like on it was like Monday, and come to find out like basically Layton was driving this entire discussion. The fee committee gave this, it gave like, here's our recommendation. One of the recommendations was that this thing should not punish. I, I actually found out more about this, but this thing should not punish the existing membership. Basically, if you're, if you're paying already $40 a year, then that's what it's going to be until you quit. You're just going to grandfather everybody's existing annual fees in, and the only people that are going to fill this is the new people, and the new people aren't going to notice the difference because they're new. It, it, it That's what the new fee is, and so that's what they wanted, and Layton's like, nope, nope, we don't want any of that. Uh, in fact, uh, I just want it to be what I want, and yeah, so they so pushed. Like gym memberships sometimes go like that. Like You get your gym membership when you sign up. Mm -hmm. A lot of other organizations, like the annual fee changes for everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it's 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 hard, right? Because I mean like the letter I wrote to the organization, it it was one of those situations where I didn't debate that, you know, prices go up. That's that we've been living through, you know, <laughs> what do they call it? Bidenomics, where we've had inflation through the wazoo for the past three years. Yeah. So everybody expects the prices go up. It was just the manner in which they did it. It was it was the surprise. You're screwed. Surprise. Here here here's the and like everyone everyone was expecting to go up. So I I saw that and I saw that they had turned around and I was sitting there looking at it and I was like, okay, sixty five dollars, essentially about what eight years or so until I yeah, pay more 7. than seven point seven years under the new under the new uh, annual fee pricing to yeah. justify the five hundred dollars if you bought it today. The thing is, functionally, the a life membership ends up costing the organization money. Well, and if the, you stay in long, if yeah. you, stay you keep in. shooting, but yeah, lots if, of people don't. Lots of people don't, and I've already done this for nine years, and I like handgun shooting, and so, uh, and I like the idea of uh, being able to vote for the organization. So I bought a life membership this week. Yeah, and it's it's hard because on one hand you're like, I, I talked to Ben Barry about this a little bit, and it's it's hard because on one hand you want you just want to you want to like burn the organization for being a bunch of dumb nuts and that's a that's a fair statement it it really is fair but at the same time you know if they do something and then they you know hear from the members and then they go through and they correct it you kind of have two options on those things you can either say well yeah but you didn't correct enough so you basically just keep beating them down or you acknowledge okay yeah you guys did something good take the win on that on that day and then still maintain, like there's still things we have to get done. We still got to have better transparency. The books need to be shown, but enjoy the win for the day. Well, the, the other thing about let's, like, let's continue tomorrow. Me, me pur purchasing my life membership has nothing to do in, um, let's say agreement or disagreement with the board. My life membership has to do with, uh, the value I see in USPSA and does shooting paying, Five hundred dollars to shoot USPSA without having to worry about my membership and saving a few digits on my member number. Does that actually have some sort of value for me over the next, uh, the cost eight point eight years, seven point two years, or seven point seven years? And it was just like, yeah, that's it. That is the transactional thing I'm doing. In no way is me buying a life membership a condolence of what they are doing. In fact. Um, Buying it again at the higher prices would be more of a condonance uh, than me just buying it now when I had to renew it le next week anyway. So I was just like, okay, whatever, I'll do this. I see myself shooting handguns competitively for at least the next a little bit until I can't do it anymore. And even then hanging out with my friends and doing it. So it was kind of like a no-brainer. And then after you spend $500 on 5,000 primers every once in a while, uh, it becomes a, a moot little point. So I, well, I didn't yeah. have any problem I with doing it. And I talked to Andrea, and she made, in my case, she made what was probably the the best observation, that this is the longest hobby I have ever had in my entire life. And it would be silly to throw it away because you're mad at the board right now, which I still am. 
Well, at least you at least secure your right to vote, and then it's uh, it's good that you get on the ability to to run for an office on the cheap. Yeah. So. And so it's 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 interesting. I mean, I got, I mean, I sent that letter to the board. I had half the board, uh, either sent me sent me emails, called me, or uh, messaged me. Yeah. Well, that's, I the the, the difference was, between other issues, <laughs> other issues and Voldemort are two different things. Like I, I, I very feel like they're very free to like discuss. And like oh, I understand, I understand. I, I see it from your perspective. We'll reconvene another meeting. We'll have it, and then bringing up he who shall not be mentioned, or he shall who not be named, uh, is a completely different thing on on the whole entire situation. Because on that situation, uh, no matter at least well on the financial side of raising the dues, like you can have a pro or against, or like I understand that. Like these are the prices. The prices need to go up regardless of the financial situation or whatever. I mean that's a pretty clear cut. But then like, well, wh why did you guys do it for Mel and not do it for Mel? And why didn't you guys take the other recommendations? And why is this uh, possible to happen? Like the board just shuts up on that because there's 17 different ways that they can be uh, critics criticized or attack on the positions that they took over the E Min situation. Right, and I mean there's no doubt. I mean the the board is always the board is always going to be in a tough spot. Because no matter it's it's the nature of everything. No matter what you do, somebody's gonna be pissed off at you. It's just the way it is. That's it, just that's just life. If you don't want to make you, decisions, you either and have didn't people... do enough, or you didn't, or yeah. you either did too much, or you didn't do enough. And, and it's it's running for I'm an not, elected I, I know office. it sounds like I'm sitting here defending the board. It's I don't in this in this statement. It to me, it's more like just making an observation. No, I, I, I they financially mismanaged themselves into a hole that they have to use a bigger shovel. To fill it up with they implemented it poorly but that does not change my perspective of the cost of memberships has gone up and i will secure a membership for cheaper like i don't give a shit what they do like as long as they don't destroy the sport and it's around for 10 more years that's fine like it's got to be around for eight years and i'll be very happy with the uh the price of my purchase because then i just i save money but no condolence no uh no um not a pat on the back my endorsement no, for it, but I still I now get to vote for. They're going to get a time. whole lump of life memberships. This is going to help them oh, out yeah. quite a bit. Uh, this is, this I, is one of those. This is one of those mistakes. This is like the new Coke, old Coke, where it may just work out in their best interest. Yeah, in it's, accident. Yeah, it, it helps the previous <laughs> like, infrastructure. We're not that smart, and we're not that dumb. As uh, Nate Osborne, I was talking with Nate, and Nate Osborne said one of the smartest things. He's just like about the Sig P320 and all its problems and all that shit that it's going through. It was literally to take the parts of a Sig P250 and like haul that over for a little bit longer because they're all interchangeable parts. And what happened to Sig, like it's just a slap together gun. What happened to Sig is it became successful. And now they have to deal with all these parts and all these litigations and all these contracts. And it's just like they F themselves into a pile of money. And now they can't they can't do it. But it's not because of like the excellent foresight. It's because they, they handle it in such a poor way. It, it's, you know, it's like uh, it's like uh, when movie stars, when when, uh, when people have like their sex tapes, they're like, oh. God, goodness, we had a sex tape, and then it comes oh, out that no. they had a sex tape, and then it, they're like, "My sex tape got out." And then it's just like, "Well, who has it?" Okay, all right, you're gonna get ten percent. We're getting eighty percent. The guy who's distributed it's getting another ten percent, and they go like, "Oh no, don't watch it, don't watch it." Link below, you know. So, <laughs> so Robert, can I ask you a couple questions about USPSA yeah, President Yi Min? Send it. So he got elected, right? He mm -hmm. got the majority of the votes. Yep. And, or got the most votes. Well, he uh, are currently, yeah, currently he uh, won in the initial round, in the okay. primaries, if you will, and had the most votes. The second, the second place was Luigi Lee. So, is is there a second round? Yeah, there will be another round, and it starts uh, whew, like uh, end of August, first of September, somewhere right in there. I don't remember the exact date, but somewhere right in there. Okay, and so assuming he wins that, is there still some issue with his RO status? So, yeah, so that's actually, that is true. Uh, so he still has to go before the board and um, actually, okay, let, me, let me explain this out. It makes a little more sense. So if he wins, um, when he was removed, there was, there was a motion filed 
which would allow him, if he was to win again, to then petition the board for reinstatement of his RO certification. Okay. Okay. So let's just – let's so play it out. So that's winning Assume, the second round that hasn't happened so, yet. Yeah. So if he, if he wins the whole kit and caboodle and he becomes the USPSA president per the membership, you then have a board of directors who then has to convene – and they have to make a decision whether they would allow him to uh, re get his RO certificate ahead of the year's time frame. Oh, because he got it yanked for a year? That's that's how it works, is you oh, can't okay. really apply for, uh, for a year. Okay. And so um, what's going to happen in that situation will be interesting because There's you a tentative have... agreement to allow that, but we don't know if they will actually follow through, right? Right, and then, and that's the thing. So you're you're going to have a situation where the membership actually voted for Yi Min to be put back in office because that's who they want as their president, and now you're going to have a board which is going to get together and they're going to have to make a decision, and they're either going to say we do not care about the will of the membership who put this man here, or we are going to follow the follow them and we're going to provide a way for him to come back. Well, but the, they've the already. They've already tentatively agreed to provide a way for him to come back, right? Well, they the, have, yes. The other part is, too, is like the consequence of saying no. So not only do you piss a lot of people off, but it's not like you just make Luigi Lee the president. Well, like, no, you actually don't. You have, to, you have to have another election. You have to have no. Oh, well, you do. Here's the, here's the, and you're right, Tommy. Luigi Lee doesn't become president. Layton does. The Area 2 director does. So here's an interesting question. If you're in the, if you're, if, Yemen wins and he then goes before the board. Is it ethical for Layton to, to be involved vote? in this or should he should he recuse himself from any of these things? Because Layton is by far. I don't far know. Let's the ask Clarence Thomas. <laughs> Clarence Thomas. You all never mind. You okay. when you like here's here's the, the deal with like the elected people on there. Uh, they don't have to lie for them not to be trusted. The, the idea that you, you could see a benefit in what they would be doing or their decision should instantly just kind of like have them discount themselves from the, the vote. And so that becomes a an issue where like whoever's going to become president or has in the ability to gain uh, more financially or uh, let's say from a, a, an increase in power in the organization should just dismiss themselves from the vote of whether or not it's going to happen. But the other thing that USPSA needs to think about is like, um, how much money do we need to keep spending on elections for you guys to kind of get like get over this? And then what's the difference that's going to be from what six months or seven months for like this uh, this ban versus uh, the entire year? Like what what's that going to sit there and fix? So right, it's just and that I think I think I mean talking to different uh, board members, um, they're in they're in a they're in a tough situation and it's a crappy situation and I don't actually I don't. I don't say that, you know, with like any schadenfreude or anything like that. It's they are now forced to become the electors in an election. And they have to actually make that decision. And the question they have to do is say, are we going to honor the will of the people or are we not? Because if they say no, then they then have to answer to the membership why they because like the bylaws don't really support this but they have to answer to the membership why is it that we allowed um this person area four mel Rodero, to get his ro certification after when a, he clearly couldn't after he was but we're, sat, we're suddenly now not going to yeah so that's is, a is there problem. is there some reason to believe that yemen won't be able to bypass the whole year as they didn't you say they had a tentative agreement to if he if he was elected and was allowed to run again then yeah so, I mean, that's right. so. Why like, wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they honor that? Did you say they had an agreement to allow well, him to they be they reinstated? Have, they, have, they have. They have. There, there's a tentative agreement that um, they would allow him to apply. No, no, it's not a tentative. Um, they made. They made. They made and passed a motion that said that he could then apply. The only thing that the only thing at that point would that would stop him is if the existing board members, um, not the new guys, Russell Fortney's a new guy, but um, the existing board members decide that they don't want him as president then they can and use that, his that's, to that's hold them where off again. it gets really really squibbly so. and so you have so you have to, right now you have to play you have to play the game of who you of who you want to try and do that and if you if you believe in you right. men get it in the first place go ahead i'm not making the connection 
So they Fair agreed enough. to let him apply. Yes. Prior to his one year date. Correct. And assuming he, you know, he's going to pass the test and do all the right things, then, then he'd be well, in, right? Yep. Well, that's they. No, they agreed they, to let him to they, petition. They, for they it. agreed to hear so, it if he won. They agreed to hear a petition. Well, okay, congratulations. That doesn't mean much, right? It, it means it, as much as they want to politically at the time, whether or not they want to let him in or not. That's what okay. it means. By, but, Steve, by all accounts, um, he should not be able to to get his RO certification for one year after it's been removed by Troy. Okay? So he should okay. not be able to. However, um, so, if, so if that was in case and he took office, he would immediately be ineligible and we'd start the whole election all over again. However... When they removed him from office, they said, we're going to allow you, if you win, to petition the board to get to get your RO okay. certification. So you have a pathway back. Okay. Because so, we're but creating it's a special election for that. It's squishy, and they can do with it what they want, right? Yeah, they can, uh, they they can, can do it. They can. It just gets problematic yeah, they, for them if they don't go with it. And the other part, they gave a shit yet what the members thought? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they did on Tuesday. I mean. No. no. Did they or do they see that the bigger, the, to make more money, the better objective is to change it? I mean, I, I don't think these guys are that fucking dumb to understand that if they just change the price back, they'll make more money from guys buying a life membership. Yep. They didn't give, I don't think they gave two shits about the board. They thought if we change it back, we'll make more money this way. Or make money on the um, membership. I don't think that any of the buddy on the board right now gives a fuck about the members. I think they knew we'll make more money changing it back temporarily. If, if that was the case, I mean, Jake Martins is the one who was actively pushing forward to do it immediately. He's the one. He, he's the one. He's the one. Which is funny because, by all accounts, he shouldn't be. On, he shouldn't be on the board, but they still let him be there. But Jake Martins is the one who said, "If you give them time, they're all going to do it." And so, functionally, it, it it didn't matter if they if they if they came and said, "Hey, we're going to raise the prices in October," and they said that right out of the gate, you'd still have a huge chunk of people that are um, that uh, renewed and took advantage of the lower price. Oh, but you, instead, you had Layton push through this massive um, increase all in one go, and that's what happened. I mean, because he, I mean, and that's how that worked. Well, re, but re, then the membership is like, okay, this is complete crap, so don't do it. Regardless of so the pri- back. regardless of the price structure, of the price structure going up or not, here's here's my two cents on the voting for Yee Min. Uh, like he got fucking jobbed. He's the screw you to them. Make them make a decision on him when he's voted in as president and then see where they come up on that and see how much they care about the organization and what they do with having another election to move somebody on or have a board member be up there or actually let Eamon Lynn in and just go about doing the job that he's supposed to do. Like, I, I, I think most people voted for Eamon because they know, like, how bad... Like he kind of got screwed over on that because if yeah. you wouldn't vote for him, if you thought like it was justly done, but the majority of the membership thinks that he got screwed over on it and that they want to see them in there and they kind of want to see the board have to make a decision and have to put him in. So um, re- regardless of how you feel of like whether he'll be in or not, like you let the board decide there and see where it goes and then see what members that you can vote for in your areas, how they decide on that. So make make people say things on the record and vote on the record. Make them do that. So I agree. If you want to be on the record with looking sharp as hell, head on over to dominatedefense.com. Get the best belt. I got a I got the carry belt on. It's fantastic. That's right. It's a Sig, Sig P220 in there. Uh, my IDPA blaster for this year for my one match and my one state match. Um, so check that out. Head on over to downloaddefense.com. Use promo code PRA, PARA10. Save 10% off the finest USPSA IDPA concealed carry belts out there on the market. Also check out Precision Holsters Fast Holster. One of, uh, it's a fantastic setup for magazine pouches and for your uh, USPSA IDPA holsters. Uh, they're boss mount compatible. You get everything on there and get all the knobs and the boss hangers all from one shop at Precision Holsters. Get that thing ordered and sent to you. Promo code PARA10. And Rune Tactical. Check them out. Get an extra bullet in the magazine of your gun that already holds 23 because it's very important and it's worth the money. Same promo code. Save 10% off. Get that 24th round, that 25, that 25th 
bullet in the blaster. Rune Tactical. Fantastic product. Also, Telegram. We ask questions. You answer questions. You guys have lively debates up there. So we can't find the questions because there's 77 messages deep. Thank you, everybody. Robert. Uh, from Alex Went. Why, do they, why does McMaster Car charge $9 for shipping screws? Uh, because uh, it's called because a collective. They can. It's called a collective UPS bargaining just, agreement. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not big master. It's those dirty bastard teamsters at UPS. It's called it's called hourly wages and fuel costs. That's exactly why they do that. It makes uh, I. It's uh sometimes I think some companies uh, literally have the the uh, the the scam artists. Remember, like we'll show you how to operate. We'll show well, like hey, old people. You don't. You can't keep up with the times. We're gonna send you a CD that you put in your computer, and it will show you how to answer and send emails. We're doing it for free. It's a service to the community. All we ask for is fourteen ninety five in two thousand one money. Shipping, handling, and processing. Like, like, listen. We would love to do it for free, but the post office pff, screwing you. Mm -hmm. McMaster car. The one thing that's great about McMaster Car is paying like fifteen dollars for shipping, and then realize the, the screws are slightly too long. Mother effer. But don't worry, you only have two hundred and fifty screws that are slightly too long. I got a I got a Dremel, man. I can take care of that. <laughs> the one thing, like like cutting screws, is like an art form. Like Kenny, you've probably had to sit there like cut and rethread screws and retap them and all that stuff. Like. It's not something you just cut, like you just like put it in there, and, like snap it off, and you're like, there it goes. It's ready to bite into the thread. Yeah, you thread a you thread a, a thread a you nut, a nut above, on it. above yeah. the above the cut, and then you just run it back down over it. So you can do that, or if it's any of a machine screw size, uh, most strippers have cutters yeah, on them. Cutters are on them. Hmm. Well, Say that again. Uh, you have so wire like cutters. Eight thirty two, ten thirty two, ten twenty fourth. Any machine screw size. Your wire strippers. Any decent ones on the bottom where it says the numbers. You thread it in there and then you cut the screw. With yes. It. So, oh no kidding. Yeah, like yeah. if you have your Craftsman wire cutters, everyone's on the part of the stripping and the crimping part. But as you go down to the handle, you'll see a bunch of things that have, like it'll say like six thirty two or whatever, six forty, four forty, and those are for your machine screw size and thread pitch. And then you run those into the handle, and then you go click, and then it cuts it. And you thread it back on. Yeah. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah, if you if you but you have to have the 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 wire strippers that have your thread pitch and your size screw because it's not good to just run the size six down when the thread pitch is completely different. All right, you assholes just cost me five hundred bucks. I'm now L five eight two three. I think I'm five seven. I think I five, did not buy my life. I think I'm five seven two. Your dad probably already got it to you. You should see with all I'll the members. <laughs> don't worry about they it. They go fuck themselves. I still haven't renewed my membership. Well, Steve, between between you and me, um, in terms of numbers, that's uh, eighty three thousand five hundred dollars to the organization. Yeah. See, they're not that dumb. They did it knowing they'll get more money this way. Not a bad move. Uh, I don't need to shoot club matches, and I told you my career of shooting majors is done with. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyone, if you're, if I you're, I shot an archery competition this weekend. Maybe I'll just go into that. There's actual real money in that. <laughs> there is real money in that, and I don't get that. Looking my, for a new co-host for the Paracast. I, I, I have a friend that I, I work with. His name is Drew, and he shoots archery. And he's like, oh, I got this prize, and I got that prize, and I'm like, there's some winning money. I gotta get down to Vegas. You know, there's four or five thousand bucks I can win down there, and it's just like. A what? Like, what yeah. is this? What? It doesn't make sense to me. It why does there's it... more money in that versus PSA? I have a feeling, and I and I, I could be wrong. No matter no matter what you do, the more the higher you get into it, the more you're going to find drama. Oh, I'm certain of that. I I, I I don't know, but I'm so, I'm I'm just I'm certain that's just the I, way. What, it is. what are you talking about? The 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 most competitive sport out there is F1. There's no drama in F1. It's not like oh. they, made, they didn't make a Netflix series exclusively almost about the drama. <laughs> a soap opera. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Jack Flash, what's the best way to become a master in IDPA? I'm currently a sharpshooter. Shoot USPSA. Steven, you've been a master for most of the 20th century and the 21st. 
Best way to become a master. I mean, shooting master in IDPA is all about fundamentals and just executing fundamentals at like, a, not even like a super high level, but like at a medium high level. So you need to make sure that you understand stance, grip, tri yeah. grip pressure, side alignment, trigger pull, trigger control, probably more than anything is trigger control. And then you just, if you can do that and then just kind of push the speed and get your speed so you're still getting good side alignment and good trigger breaks, yeah, you can get that. That five by five classifier is pretty simple, and there's you, oh. there's a little bit of strong hand shooting, but it's the same fundamentals when you're shooting strong hand. It's still trigger control side alignment. So like there's there's like the two ideas. Like back in the day, like the old IDPA classifier that you used to have to shoot was 90 rounds, and it had was it 20 yards or 15 yards where it had the uh, that all the all the kids would have like their ass just kicked. I can't remember oh, yeah. if it was 20. It would just be like okay. Uh, this target's 17 points down. This target's 11 points down. This yeah. target's 7 yeah. points down. Good job on this right target. You did great. Um, a lot of the things about becoming master in IDPA, which I would say is accuracy. You can no longer take points down. I mean, points down is like the difference between like a sharpshooter and like a master. Like you might see a little bit of stage flow that goes through, but the master does not drop any points. And the worst part, like, I wouldn't be in a, a huge rush to compete in Master in IDPA because Master is the most broken um, classification in IDPA because you can be a USPSA, I mean, an IDPA Master and a B-Class USPSA shooter, or you can be an IDPA Master and a GM USPSA shooter. And those things are quite different. But the one thing that you have to do is no points down. And so, like, if you want to Master a 5x5, five there's like one drill you could basically do get like your pistol or whatever put a tape in the slide if it's like a glock so you can manipulate the trigger fast and then like take a simulated 15 yard target get in a grip that you find is like your shooting grip point it at that target and then manipulate the trigger as fast as you can and what that's going to show you is like when you're under stress what you're actually inputting into your grips and that will show what the dot's actually doing so when you do that and you can only replicate it in dry fire by going like maximum force like how many times can i pull the trigger in 10 seconds and then i'll show you the deficiencies in your grip and once you fix that grip all you have to do is work on bringing the gun up in alignment to the target the focus point that you're trying to shoot because everything else in idpa is predetermined like the order that's where you're shooting that's mostly predetermined where your standing's pretty easy and so all you actually need to do is be able to rip shots like and by ripping i mean like quarter of a second with high accuracy because when you look at people who are winning their state matches or, or competitive and master over something like 10 stages they might have nine points down or like 12 points down but none of this 30 points down nonsense so that would probably yeah. be the best the best thing and if you're already accurate then you just need to it's fundamentals it's range time it's being able to shoot a slow fire target being able to shoot a nice small group on a slow fire target yep and then speeding it up all those it, it's, def all, it's fundamentals it's definitely can you put the bullets where you want to put them in three tenths of a second that's that's idpa master and being competitive in, in idpa as a master can you do that and if you can do that you'll you'll be very successful because all your other competitions and sharpshooter expert or beginning part of master will sink their own ship by uh, points down very true Robert, any oh. ideas, thoughts? You're an IDPA master. Yeah. Um, I would say is the five by five is that is that the is yeah. that the classifier now? They don't do yep. the they, they don't have do another school. classifier, but it's never seen or never never used. Yeah, no one's ever gonna shoot it because the five by five you can have you can run someone through it in three minutes. Okay. And it's like Oprah okay, giving so... away cars. Everyone's a master. You're All a right. master. So there's and there's five there's five strings five, five strings five. and i think is one of the str strings strong hand yes yeah. yeah okay but there's so, no weak hand four four strings four strings 25 rounds total there's that a is, there's a five reload five five strong hand four to the body a, there, one to the head there's a body in the head one and there, yeah the remember. last one is four to the body and one to the head so yeah you, you have to you do have to shoot one headshot yeah so if it was me 
um, I would find somebody who actually shot a master, uh, a master run. And then I would take all of the times that they did on each individual string. And then in dry fire, I would set the par time for each individual string. And then I'd figure out, I'd figure out how fast I had to do to, to make those dry fire times. Then I'd go out and I would in live fire, I would, I would set all of those par times and I'd pull the gun out and I'd actually shoot the string. I don't care about my points right now. I would shoot what's, it just to see how, what's this, what's this happens. Every, this happens every time like? we run the class fire. The times are all the same. It's just some people are down 30 points and some people are down zero. And the down zeros are the masters. But you listen to everyone's shooting cadence. It's just about the same. And I, I want to grab it. And I'm like, you cannot shoot this fast because look at your... You're just spraying bullets everywhere. You got to... Well, my, there's something wrong my, with your trigger control or your side right. alignment. My the, the point that I'm kind of getting at is I think a lot of people don't understand the amount of time that they actually have to make, to make accurate hits. And if you if you get the gun out and you know how much time it's going to take, you're going to put them wherever. You're, and at that point, okay, well if you're constantly putting them up here, okay, that's telling you your trigger control here sucks. You've got to figure this out. But at least you know the time because it's easy to slow down and get your hits, but then you're behind the power curve. Figure out the time that you have to make it in. Figure out where your hits currently are, and then figure out how, then figure out how to make your hits get to the zero, and then go from there. That's that's what I. That's kind of how I look at it. Well, the the there one thing go. that's very different between IPA and USPSA as far as classifications. The classifications is like it's the aircraft carrier. It's the moving ship. It oh, it moves a little faster depending on who the highest guy that was shot there. But like the IDPA classifiers, that's just a big old runway. Like it's posted. It's on the internet. It tells you exactly what you need to do. And even if you I, practice that in like eighty percent, like if you take the time, if the time is let's say two seconds, and then you make your part time in which you will practice that speed at 1.4 seconds, um, you can basically metronome yourself into a good pace and then have some extra flub and see how much time you actually have to do it. It's, I heard they actually they, uh, lowered the time. Or no, yeah, they yeah. lowered the time right. for master or rich from what their original 5x5 five five was. Yep. yep. Do you know how much it was? I don't know, a second or something. They took a little bit of time off. Yeah, because it was the to get the master when they first came out with the five by five, there was was a a lot of folks. It was really easy to do. Well, the other part of the nice thing about the IDPA classifier is uh, it never gets lower than the people in the room who are making the decision that they can't make it. (laughs) Like if you're a current master now and like you shoot it in eighty nine seconds. I'll tell you, I'll give you a good number of what that classification is going to be. It's going to be 90 seconds. 90 seconds to make master. What time did I shoot? 89 seconds. <laughs> 90 seconds to make master. That is the time. Oh, we, we call that the Wilson special. <laughs> so No, you know what? I actually, I still think that, by and large, the original classifier was actually one of the better tests of general uh, your general ability to shoot. Because yep. it had long shots, it had moving shots, even though we all know that everybody kind of did that little like one-two shuffle thing for the moving stuff. Oh, it had reloads with retention, strong hand, weak hand. Barricade. There was a like, lot of good stuff. You had to shoot like six shots weak hand or something like that. Yeah, it was just hard to set up. And yes, so nobody and ever very, wanted to do it. Very time do. consuming. Like the one, the one problem that always happened with the IDPA classifiers, people dared to put it in a match. It's like you don't yeah, do that. Move. You know how you how you do six stages and have an IDPA classifier on it. You have six squads and you have six IDPA classifiers. That's how you make a match for IDPA classifiers. You shoot ninety rounds. Like it was, it was, it it really separated for I think a lot of people who could like pull the gun out and shoot fast. When they got back there to fifteen or twenty yards or whatever, like it became you you would saw the the fundamentals fall apart and even at 10 yards on the the idp five by five like it's a fun course of fire it's absolutely fun it's fun to go out there and shoot and and look at the times and it always makes you feel good it's like oh I, I made the times for this or i made the times for that but it is not nearly the pace or the skill set that uspsa does so. Well, they, I mean, I think they say uh, an IDPA master is like a B class yeah, shooter that's a, in that's, USPSA. That's, a that's fair. fair. Yep. Somewhere in there. And yeah. then and then the floor goes. It's like getting your black belt. It's like, well, what degree black belt is? I'm just a black belt. And then there's like, oh, this guy has like seven of them. Like he's done this like seven times. That's the difference in IDPA master. Like there's people like me and there's people that like Bob Vogel. 
and before they had Distinguish Master, on paper, same shooter. Get out, <laughs> get out, out there. Yeah, I'm convinced. I'm convinced if Kenny showed up to an IDPA match and wore his tactical uh, bow hunting vest, he'd still kick our ass. Oh, it, 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 the only the only thing that would keep anybody away is points down and penalties. That's the only I think, thing. That, I think that Kenny hurts could it. outshoot the penalties. It's it's. It was uh, Brian no, Nelson. You you, IDPA, IDPA penalties. The penalties are so stiff, you can never outshoot them. There is no points per second in IDPA. IDPA's penalties are like getting caught graffitiing in Thailand or Singapore. They are severe. Someone's getting a caning. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly what it is because you can see it in the mirror when you turn around. It's, it's like, that's how much that cost me. Right there. There's the math. But, oh, absolutely. Kenny would, Kenny would shred. He'd obliterate. Everybody in like I don't know west of the Mississippi, pretty much. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if I remember to shoot a pistol anymore. Shut up! I this this the press. I quit. Kenny is the worst. Kenny. Someone out there that's in another area, please tell him he's no good. Challenge him to something. He'll sign up. He'll get a life yeah. membership. Tell him in ten years you'll be beating. His, tell him in ten years you'll be beating his ass into the ground, and he'll be like, I bet you you won't. He'll show up to the twenty thirty three championship somewhere and and be Kenny Terry. Uh, next mm -hmm. question. Next question. Let's see. Uh, from our good friend Alex Mansell, what's the best way to cook bacon? Kenny, you get the Costco bacon. I uh, I don't know. You don't know. Don't you have like a Traeger? Don't all you Traeger people just be? Oh, I put it in the Traeger for eighteen seven yeah, seconds. I don't, I've never smoked bacon. Vanessa's always cooked bacon. I don't know. I'm sorry. Bacon gets fried. It gets slightly salted with some uh, Himalayan sea salt or some Redmond salt. You and put you, more salt on it, dude. I, I've gone 40 years without really seasoning my food with salt and pepper. Let me tell you, I'm having a love affair with salt right now. I have so much salt. It is, the, it is fantastic. And my okay. blood pressure. And Tom cooks a steak. He my, salts it. Dude, puts it in the fridge. An hour later, salts it again. I it salt it when I cook it. <laughs> I salt it when it comes out and when it's at rest. And my blood pressure is peak blood pressure. They always comment when I get my blood pressure. It's like, you have fantastic blood pressure i was like i know it's the salt it's the salt it helps you retain water it gives you that good that good thickness on that on that blood it helps you retain that moisture it gets it pumping through but man i love effing salt like i just i have a salt shaker in my backpack so that when my food at work is not properly salted i salt it i love it i love it i can't help it i can't help it and i won't and I have Costco bacon every morning, the microwave <laughs> stuff, but man, pan fried bacon in a cast iron skillet with a little salt, a little butter in there. Sometimes a little maple syrup on the side, a little dipping, a little cross contamination <laughs> with the pancake. What are you going to do with it? Eat it. There's two ways. You either, pan, either cook in a pan or you um, lay them all out on a, on a sheet and you uh, bake them. And uh, they come out really, really good when you put them in a put them in an oven uh the, the best either way works the the best thing that i love of it like i don't like i'm not trying i'm trying not to eat white bread but the other day i had a, a like a, a frailty as a man i got some avocado mayo some nice avocado mayo in the glass jar and the one thing i used to love doing is just bacon sandwiches just a slight thing of mayo just only six or seven slices of bacon on two pieces of white bread you salt it pepper it you cut that thing down the middle Gosh damn, if that ain't a Monday. You know Man, what I'm saying? You, you can take the boy out of the trailer, but you can't take the... <laughs> we used to have, like, like bacon was, like, a cheap thing that we used to always be able to cook. But, like, it's, a, like, pan frying stuff. So when, like, I lived in, like, a trailer, like, when my dad won custody and he lived in a trailer, like, that's how bad the other side was. Uh, we only had, like, a, a pan to fry stuff. And he used to get the Snappy Tom and he used to fry the bacon in the frying pan and then he'd pour the snappy tom which is like a spicy v8 kind of mixture and it'd be like this tomato bacon soup with all the fat in it and he used to call it alligator soup and that stuff was delicious i i since do not like tomato soup but i have fond memories fair enough uh let's see uh also from alex mansfield uh what is robert's favorite favorite taylor swift song that would be delicate from the 2017 release of uh, the Reputation album, which was her sixth studio album. My, my son's uh, home ec teacher, which is a very large 30-year-old uh, man, has all the kids sectioned off into groups, one through like eight, and each one of the groups is represented by a Taylor Swift album. 
Uh, so like number five is the one that has the whatever, the, all the hits or whatever. And of course the real answer is bad blood, but yeah, he's a big Taylor Swift person. Yep. Yep. A lot of, a lot, a lot of great artists out there. Uh, from Connor Williams. Um, how, how should I stop being impatient when it comes to shooting mini poppers at distance? Kenneth. Well, uh, he doesn't shoot. He doesn't shoot anymore. So he, his opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> stop being impatient. How do you is stop he, being is impatient? He wasting when it comes to is he wasting a round or two on every mini popper array? I've been struggling with this. I, I roll up and I the sights are still wobbling around and I crack a shot off and I'm like, oh, these are, these are mini poppers. You have to respect the sight picture and let it slow down to what it needs to be. You can't just blast them like they're big poppers. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I mean, I, a mini popper's not a hard shot. Sam has an A zone. I'd have to say if you're dumping it, maybe double plugs. I've seen people like to get a little too confident in their first shot because they think they're going to hear it instead of just respecting the sights. But I've never actually had a problem with that. I mean, so, same size as a, a an A zone. So here's mini here, poppers are still a chip shot. Here's my theory, and I don't know Connor's points or what he does, but generally, if you struggle with shooting small targets, like small steel targets, it's because the paper does not catch them, or it immediately tells you that you've missed. Which my hypothesis would be that you're most likely not getting the sight picture you should be getting on everything else and that the mini poppers tell you that because if you're seeing a lot of two charlie alpha charlie or the alpha uh, the zone on like a seven or eight yard target you're feeling the entire zone with two alphas instead of like a specific point that the gun is returning to i i would i would probably suspect that your sight picture is not all there and that the only one that's telling you the truth is the mini popper yeah probably tom fry correct on that I think you just you should just slow down and get your hits. Yeah, exactly. Well, just keep slowing down. <laughs> if you're if you're if if you're in my division in class, then definitely slow down and get your hits. Don't shoot how I'm shooting. I'm really screwing up. Shoot half the speed, most of the points. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, let's see. From Andy Erickson, have you ever heard heard of or seen someone who occludes a dot, shoots with both eyes open? And then shoots a nice group seven inches left of where they were aiming. I know two people who don't suck um, that this happens to. Seven inches of where they were aiming. Is it a cross-eye dominance thing? Eye dominance? Could be. I, I do not. Th well, let's see. I've shot at speed with the occluded dot at like 20 yards. And I did not see a shift in the group. But I would have to, like, if you're... So, I would have to actually see if I would if I were doing it. My the only thing that kind of like makes me think that that would actually happen is if you were using the other eye or if you're doing something with the alignment right off the bat that it would appear to be, or if you have like one eye that's so much stronger than the other that it's the the, the image is a little weird. Well, so the I'm whole not sure. Point of shooting occluded is to verify that you're shooting target focused, target and focused, if you're target correct focused then why would you still continue to shoot occluded yeah that's, I, I, that's I, what I, that's what i don't just i don't just the, get it'd be a training tool to make sure that your eyes stay in the plane of the targets sure. the whole time the problem is sure. well here's the other here's the other the other contradictory thing is that when you shoot groups what focus are you when you shoot the groups target focused or, or front sight focused. Because I've never shot a group with a rifle where I've been target focused. I've never really shot a group, like even when I'm zeroing my dots, I've never sat there and laid the dot down and then was just like target focus all the way. It's like, no, I'm staring at that dot, making sure it's stable, centered in the spot that I want to shoot it. And then I fire the shot. I break the shot. Wait, but but I'm there's not... only one plane out there, right? Well, there's... Uh... You, you can't... You, I mean, you can... You can look at okay. the targets and then you can look at the dot. And the whole point of like when you put the, the, the cover over the dot is if you actually look at the depth of the dot, you can't see anything behind it because all you see is the tape. But if you look at the targets, you see the dot on the targets where they're supposed to be. So I, I kind of find it that it might be a self-contradictory thing to try to shoot a group while the dot is occluded. Because yeah. my guess is that you would start focusing on the dot and the point of impact would 
actually shift to where it was. Kind of a weird Kenny, thing. What do you, Kenny, what do you think? Well, I'm just curious. Uh, so I have, maybe I'm fucking weird, but if I zero my red dot with one eye closed and then open both eyes, my red dot's on the same spot. Maybe my eyes are jacked. So I'm curious where you said both eyes open. Did they zero their dots with one eye closed or? I don't know. I've never shot occluded, so never played with it. Yeah, that that would be. I mean, that's actually a, it's actually an interesting point because I mean, if you it's the classic, how do you you know, how do you uh, uh, figure out which eye dominance you are? I mean, you you know, open an eye, close an eye, and if your finger, if your thumb or whatever moves, then that obviously tells you. So maybe they're looking at it like that. It's yeah, that, strange to me. I don't get it. Well, there's there's definitely there's definitely a thing that I believe that there's more shooters than we actually know who do not understand what their eye dominance is, but were right-handed and just brought the gun up to the non-dominant eye, and started shooting like that. Especially in a dot world. Yeah. Yeah, and so like they start bringing it up, and then they're like, oh, like I can see this, and this is how I present the gun, and this is where the dot is, without ever the concept of just sliding the gun over to the dominant eye. But I, I, I think that, yeah, definitely like what Kenny is saying, like if you try to zero the gun in that kind of realm, that you're probably going to run into a lot of problems. I don't think anybody is actually talking about um, having zeroing the dot occluded, shooting everything you possibly can occluded, occluded shooting uh, small groups occluded, but like mostly like training and practice and keeping your eyes target focused and not having them fall back to the dot because the problem is when you fall back to the dot is you start chasing the dot and the dot appears to be in a place um that you shoot sooner and it's not actually in the place that you should be like looking at the target and looking at the fine spot will subconsciously return the gun to where you want it to go instead of like trying to like land the bouncing ball uh let's see from a good friend zach uh what hobbies would you all pursue if uspsa goes under and the other options don't seem to have the same draw to you. Archery. <laughs> With Kenny. Let's do it. I, Robert, I don't know. What do you think? Dude, this is, this is the only thing I have. I don't have other hobbies. Well, you're, you're very, mean, you're very much more USPSA focused than the rest of us. I mean, you're a section coordinator. Like, like I, I, I kind of see both of them as two different things. Like, yeah. I, I see, like, handgun shooting way up here, USPSA, like, somewhere at the 30% mark. And the only reason I like the USPSA thing is because the best handgun shooting is at USPSA. So, like, I, I love handgun shooting. And I don't like all handgun shooting. Like, I have no interest in a bunch of different handguns. Like, I like... 2000s service handguns and i like to shoot those so like I, I, if uspsa goes away it doesn't bug me if uspsa goes away i don't know dude i mean i i, I don't i don't wake up in the morning and sit there and think hey i'm going to go understand i'm not i'm not speaking negatively but i don't wake up in the morning and say hey i'm going to go out and shoot a great day of idpa or pcsl or three gunners it <clears throat> it it never really comes up on my radar as something fun to do. If yep. I'm not shooting USPSA, I'm working around the house. And, and that, that's, that's what I do. I yep. mean, to me, USPSA is, it's the start, the end, and everything in the middle of what shooting is. And I know a lot of people love to shoot like rifles, shotguns, all that other sort of thing. And I, I, there's no disrespect and I don't have anything against that. But for me, like, I've, I've said this before. I mean, like, I love USPSA, and Slipsa is my home. And everything I do is for the betterment of Slipsa. Because I don't see I don't see the national organization doing anything for our club. But I do see my actions, like, going out and putting up panels or uh, cleaning up the range with everybody. I see that as helping my club. Yep. And so if my club, if Slipsa, if that, that's my home... If that's if they decided to go do something else, I'd probably go do that something else with them. But USPSA is still the everything to me. But other and that's, fun ho- that's why it's hard because like for me, it's I mean like I get really pissed off at USPSA, and then in the back of my mind I'm like, yeah, but what else are you gonna do? Yep. You could play pickleball. Pickleball is pretty fun. 
pickleball pickleball Take a is a sport over. for for people who are too poor to play tennis. I read that somewhere. I'm like, that's kind of interesting. The, the, the one thing is like all the pickleball court, all the tennis courts in my neighborhood, like all have like pickleball lines now so they can just drive on there. Cause pickleball that has become super, they have super like popular. 17 yeah. courts South of my house. Yeah. And you just, you'll all go run and I'll just hear clack, 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 stop. We, clack, we clack, design clack, a lot of them now. We, we yeah. put a lot, we put a lot of pickleball courts, um, in people's sports court underneath their, underneath their garage and their backyards. Um, we just had a house that was just finished that has two pickleball courts in their yard. Um, yep. they're not yeah, cheap, are they? No, no, yeah, they I are heard. not. <laughs> I heard 55 to $60,000 to have a pickleball what? court. They're, well, they have like pretension cables in the concrete so that there's no, so you don't get cracks that develop cause you want a smooth court. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, 20 grand. And this guy's like, no, 55 to 60. And you're like, how about 20 grand? And then you, <laughs> then you pointed well, you the Glock a, and you said, how you much you see court? your family tonight and 20 grand? You could probably have a court there, but it's not going to be great. We need professional level, professional level courts. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I'd hunt, still be hunting, hunting, hunting Kenny there. would never, I, I, it's never once moved the needle for me. That's fair enough. I just, I, I, I've never. I like shooting. I like shooting brown targets more than I like shooting anything else. Tom, it, what are your other hobbies? Uh, like I like um, the one thing Army. that I I find myself uh, very good at, um, but not wanting to put the time into because it's not as cool. Is like I like racing. I like racing games. Like I'm, like believe it or not, um, I'm a pretty good driver. Like I can like drive everything. Like I just I just have it. Like problem, I, the problem is you only drive fifty five miles an hour. I only drive a sixty five, baby. I put that bad boy. I'm allowed sixty five in that cruise. But like I'm pretty good driving, and like I'm actually Tommy's pretty. Getting, Tommy's getting lapped in in the in the games, and he's like, slow down, slow down, damn it. So like I have like these oh, racing he's got, wheels. He's got a steering wheel what? and everything. And I have like these sim things, and every once in a while, like I'll get a wild hair and just be like, all right, let's just play this for a couple days and let's go race. And it has a very, it has a lot of similarities to um, competitive shooting. Like there's like only a certain way you got to do it. And like, if you're a little here or a little there, like you're done. Like, thanks for playing. Whole thing screwed up now. Uh, enjoy being last place. Enjoy wrecking this. Uh, you didn't pay attention for, a, a, you know, a tenth of a second. You broke, you, 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 you know, hit the brakes on the wrong point. You biffed a turn. You're too light. You didn't pay attention to the left or right. And so, like, I, I really like it. Like, not like F1 style, but like uh, GT3s and like regular, like sports car racing, like on Sims. Like, I like that a lot. And you know, like, I get into it and I was pretty good. I, you know, I used to play like the Gran Turismo and play that online. And I was in the top 1,000 for a little bit. And that's a very big game. But it's not is something. It, is that is that big, Tommy? I don't. I mean, it's top 1,000. That's huge, like right? it sold like 23 million copies. I don't know how many people yeah. played online. <laughs> Wow, but that's like, cool, dude. But like, you could get like, if you devote yourself to it, and like, you sit there and you learn a track, and it's like, what's practice, you know, for USPSA, you know, like fifteen minutes of like good dry fire, and what's practice on a sim racer? It's like, go drive this track in the car you're gonna race with on the setup you're gonna go, and just do it for like two hundred laps till you got it like, till you can like basically fade away and just your body takes over, and so like it's it's fun, like it can be like a fun thing, but I do not find the coolness of it because. When I have, when you, when you meet somebody and they're like, oh yeah, I can still carry. And then you show them a video of what they're doing. All of a sudden they're like, holy shit, this guy's dangerous. He could kill everybody here. And then you're just like, <laughs> but I'm the nicest. And they go, you are the nicest. And that's, that's the awesome thing about it. Like when, when Kenny just spears a hobo at 50 yards and people, people start taking him real serious. <laughs> <laughs> I said my money on Saturday. We said, don't run in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Is that it? All right. Well, we thank you for uh, everyone for showing up. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for going on to the Patreon. We talked about car stereos. Believe it or not, like that's the hot talk you car get. Car stereos and how to steal them. And how to steal them. And the whole thing. My, my favorite thing uh, about car stereos was Adam Carolla used to have this beat up car and he used to talk about he had like a decent stereo plate and what he did is he took a rattle can of brace brown spray paint because he knew what all the buttons did and just painted over the front of the the thing because <laughs> you can't steal it sell it for crack you can't fence it if it looks like that 
<laughs> and it's not like they want... No one who steals stereos is just like, that's the one I want. That's the one. That's the hi-fi system I need in my car. No, that's not what they steal. It took them a generation of hardworking drug addicts to figure out you need the catalytic converter. Saw that bitch off. It's worth more. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it took. Like, a, there's a there is a whole time where catalytic converters were super easy to tear off, and no one thought that's where the money is. That's where I need to go. They went for the electronics. That's, I'm gonna bring two thousand back. I'm going Tom's house. I'm stealing it out of that CRV. <laughs> yeah, burn it. I'm, I'm only gonna steal the faceplate though. You can have the stereo. It's <laughs> it's, it's all in there. You, they're they not even, face plates they anymore. Have face plates anymore. No, it's an LED oh, okay. screen. Yeah, I'm stealing the whole damn deck. I was looking online. They have some of them. They have twelve inch LED screens. They're like the big tat. Like you can set it up there and it offsets, and like you can do everything on your phone and it does. It's like basically having the Tesla but for your whatever but the interesting thing is, is that they don't make it like a lot of them for like newer model cars because the newer model car systems are so good that there's like no market for it and they're all like more oh, like yeah, the yeah. way that they're right. set in and laid in there like they're they're way different like the new hyundai's have like the entire line that goes across the dashboard and so only for like back in the days when third parties were making them for the major manufacturers do they have the plates for them the double dins the singular singular double din huh. Yeah, the Explorer had like it was like one and a half, so you had to get a very special uh, plate just to get the thing get yeah. get it to work. This one, if mine was a single, it had a little change thing that you could put underneath, and that's what I need. I need a wallet and change, another wallet and change compartment. And yeah, whenever I see those things on cars, I was like, okay, well, what part were you too poor to get? That's how I always <laughs> think of them, because that's what they look like to me. It's like when I bought the Ranger, I'm like. I'm like, make sure that every every one of those like potential spaces are filled up because I don't want people to think I'm poor. Yeah, it's like you didn't get the thing, but I actually think that. you didn't get the the OnStar thing. Is like, did you buy the extra charge your phone kit that has the wireless charging bay underneath here so you can drop it down? And you're like, oh, yours doesn't have it. And then like you see like the little buttons, like, oh, that's for self park, but you didn't buy the limited, so that little part's not put in there. You see it like all that little stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now like, Robert's got to sell his Ranger and buy a Tremor Ranger. So I, people know he's not poor. Well, I actually, I actually saw that that Raptor Ranger when they when they first announced it. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's like a twin turbo V6, and I'm like, oh, that's just awesome. I think I'd get one of those things. And then they like during Pride Month they came out with that like that Pride flag one, and I'm like, that's gay. No one, no one wants it now. No one wants it. No and cells. So, like I'm sitting here and I'm like, it'd be a really cool truck. But man, I, I hated that commercial. I, listen, being in many cars that the turbo has gone out while I've been driving, I'm not a fan of of cars with turbos because you know what the car does when it doesn't have Get the turbo with the working. Times, Tom. Well, when the turbo's not working, it is the exact opposite of turbo with the stock engine. Uh, anyways, and guess what? Thanks done, to they, EPA, everything's gonna have to go turbo. Everything's gonna have to go so turbo. Yep. Yeah. V8 yep. will quit being produced in two years. I mean. Yep. Speed. And they, I I I like it when we when we come out with worse environmental technology to to like make like really dumb people happy. Yeah. Yay. Well, the the good thing uh, is, is that crap. you don't have to see the people mining the lithium. Anyways, thanks for joining <laughs> us for Steve Koski, Robert White, and Kane Terry. I'm Tom Nelson, meaning peace, love, and soul. As we depart into the open waters of the Sea of Life on a low tug, what we like to call the Paracast. Hasta la vista, baby. Good night, everybody. Toot toot. <laughs>